The launch pad is continuing its exploration into the metaverse with some surprises along the way. Start the countdown. Welcome back to the Investor Place Launchpad, where we take a look at trending investment ideas and try to rocket them to the moon. I'm head of mission control, Aaron Davis, and this week we're continuing our exploration into the metaverse and try to make sense of all the intricacies and opportunities that the metaverse offers. As always, before we dive in, we'd love to continue to grow our channel here at Investor Place, so feel free to hit that like and subscribe button and smash that notification bell to stay up to date with us here at the Launchpad. With all of that out of the way, let's launch back once again into the metaverse and see where it might take us. This week and next week, we'll be exploring the metaverse with the help of a very special guest, making his return to the Investor Place channel, senior investment analyst for InvestorPlace.com, Luke Lango. I got to sit down with Luke, who took some time out of his very busy schedule to help give us some insight and perspective on the metaverse. So without further ado, here's part one of that interview. Luke, welcome back to the Investor Place channel. Hey, Aaron, thanks for having me. Luke, I, I know you've been super busy, so I just want to first say thank you for taking the time to talk with us. You know, you've been predicting the rise of the metaverse for a while now, and it, now that that prediction has had mainstream attraction from Facebook's rebrand as Meta, I, we wanted to pick your brain to help our audience make a little more sense about what the metaverse is and some of the opportunities that it presents uh, potential investors. Right, Aaron. Um, yeah, the metaverse is probably the single hottest investment trend on Wall Street right now. It seems like investors can't get enough of the metaverse. Uh, now, when you think of the metaverse, a lot of people think of Ready Player One, that science fiction movie. Basically, just the creation of this virtual world that people can plug into, immerse themselves into. And while that might seem like a science fiction concept, and indeed, is a science fiction concept. Um, sometimes the best investment opportunities in the world happen when science fiction becomes reality. And that is a point we're at right now with the metaverse. Um, the metaverse breaks down into two components. You have the hardware stack and you have the software stack. The software stack is simply getting developers, coders, software engineers to actually make the metaverse, the virtual world that you're playing in, whether that be virtual games or virtual mall or virtual version of uh, the Louvre Museum, for example. That has been fleshed out. That part of the metaverse problem is already fixed. Uh, think about just video games in general, right? You can play any video game, Roblox, Fortnite, um, any of the Call of Duty games. You can play those games. They have great graphics. They're immersive. They get good, great gameplay. They're awesome. The software part of the metaverse is, is done. The hardware part is the part that's been the great limiting factor for the metaverse construction. And the hardware part is putting on a big bulky headset and plugging into the metaverse so that you can actually play with your movements. That requires sensing technology, that requires some AI technology, that requires some very advanced technology that up until recently has not been good enough to provide a truly high quality metaverse experience to consumers like you and me. But that is changing. Meta, or, uh, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, they've all been developing and working on these, the hardware for the metaverse. And it's at a point right now, we're at a tipping point basically, where that hardware is becoming good enough that people can plug into the metaverse and actually have a truly exceptional experience. And that's only going to improve in the coming years. So once the hardware, I, I like to say the hardware is in like the eighth or ninth inning of development. Once that hardware comes to the bottom of the ninth, and it couples with the software that's already done, that's when you see the birth of a truly exceptional virtual world that everybody is going to be plugged into. It's the next evolution of the internet. So with, with Facebook then announcing this shift to their brand as Meta, uh, has that changed the scope of what the metaverse is in, in light of their announcement? You know, Aaron, all that's really done is validate the space. Uh, Facebook is headed by, founded by, still uh, headed by Mark Zuckerberg. And Mark, I love him, hate him, whatever your opinion of him is, is a guy who has successfully predicted enormous technological trends. He was the guy who basically predicted the rise of social media and built a trillion dollar empire out of that. 
him taking his trillion dollar empire and completely rebranding it as a metaverse company is essentially him making a trillion dollar bet on the metaverse being the next evolution of social media and even more broadly the next evolution of the internet and he's not alone right microsoft ceo has come out and said that hey metaverse is going to be huge google ceo same thing nvidia has talked about it amd's talked about it multiple venture capitalists have talked about it the entire technology world is saying the metaverse is the next evolution of the internet wall street's just finally listening so that's all that's really changed. The metaverse has been in development for several years now. Zuckerberg just came out and put his foot down and said, this is the future. And every other tech leader has come out and agreed with him. Wall Street's listening, retail investors are listening, money's pouring into the space. So that's, that's what has changed, but technologically nothing really has changed. Everything is progressing at the same pace it has been progressing for the past few years. So then how would you describe the impact of the metaverse as a potential investment space? Yeah, so the economic opportunities of the metaverse, we like to break it down into three pillars. Uh, The first pillar is gaming, metaverse gaming. So that's the first thing everyone thinks about when they think about the metaverse, because that's the first thing that like Ready Player One was, right? It's this game where you go in and you compete with friends and different virtual reality competitions. We think that's going to be an enormous market. We think those competitions could span anything from a virtual basketball game to a virtual first person shooter to virtual hunting games. We think those games can be integrated with real money uh, so that you basically pay a fee to enter a competition. And then, you know, the winner of the competition gets a prize or they get status or whatever it may be. So we think there's a huge economic opportunity around metaverse game. The second pillar is metaverse shopping, that we think that, you know, we're here in the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the super shopping weekend. Um, 10 years ago, we all went to the mall and JCPenney's and Macy's and all those stores to to get our clothes and our, you know, whatever goods we needed for the holidays. Um, Now we do it online, we do it on our phones and on our computers. We think that in 10 years, we're gonna plug into the metaverse to go shopping. So what, what does that even mean? It means you put on your headset, it means you plug in with your avatar and you go to like a Nike store on the metaverse. And before you think, you know, go say this is all sci-fi, Nike just partnered with Roblox to launch Nike land in the metaverse. So this is actually already being built. Uh, You go to the Nike store in the metaverse. There's the shoes, uh, basketball, jersey, shorts, whatever you want to buy. You buy it in the same way you would buy it in uh, online. Uh, you click buy, but then right after that, that's only like 2% of the process. The other 98% is guess what else Nike Land has? Nike Land's gonna have a basketball court. Nike Land's gonna have a, a swimming pool. Nike Land's gonna have a track. Nike Land might even have a freaking Magic Mountain where you can do some, some ski runs, right? So Nike Land's gonna allow you to, while you shop, experience all these super cool gaming experiences. Um, and we think that is gonna just completely make shopping fun. Like it's gonna allow us to enjoy shopping, not sit in long lines, not have to battle through crowds, not just, you know, scroll and tap. It's gonna make shopping fun, interactive, engaging, social. That's the metaverse shopping pillar that we're really excited about. We think that revolutionizes the multi hundred billion dollar um, e-commerce market. And then the third pillar is metaverse advertising. So the metaverse is just gonna be a place where we hang out a virtual world where we hang out, we're chit-chatting with friends, we're working, we're shopping, we're playing, we're doing all these things. Wherever we hang out is where our eyeballs are and ad dollars chase eyeballs. So ad dollars are going to flood into the metaverse. We're talking metaverse billboard advertisements. We're talking people wearing branded t-shirts for ads. And another kind of underrated aspect that we think is going to emerge here is the, the introduction of virtual salespeople. So we think that brands like Nike, brands like Adidas, brands like Dick Sporting Goods, whatever it may be, are going to create armies of virtual avatars that are salespeople for them. So you're walking around in the metaverse and then boom, you you run into a Nike salesperson, a virtual bot that's like, hey, dude, have you checked out our uh, latest Nike Air Force 17,000 and twos? 
whatever the heck they are at that, that point in time. And then you're like, oh, no, I haven't. Show me them. And then that person will pull it out and show you a little virtual screen of those shoes. You're like, you want to buy them right now? Boom, buy, done. And that's that's the advertising model, the shopping model. We think that's going to be a huge thing in the metaverse. We think conversational AI is a great enabling technology for that. Really bullish on that space. So. Anyways, we think that those are the three big pillars, economic opportunities of the metaverse. You have gaming, shopping, advertising. Together, uh, our numbers estimate that this is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. That's why Wall Street's getting so bullish. That's why we're so bullish. And that's why I think there's a lot of money to be made in this industry over the next few years. So you've definitely described, I think, the the ten year lookout of what the metaverse looks like. But what do, what does it look like in fifty years? In in you know. What, what is the metaverse going to be like then? Right. Well, the cool thing about it is nobody knows. And that's why it's so awesome. Because with the metaverse, you are creating a virtual world. Think about the real world. Think about all the things you can do in the real world. Right now, I can, I can hop on a plane. I, I can go thousands of different places. I, I can go down the street, I can go shopping, I can watch some TV. I, there's so many different things I can, I can go swimming. Um, there are so many things I can do in the real world. You're gonna be able to do all those things in the virtual world. So you're creating this entirely new world with an entire new set of opportunities. Um, the cool things here is that in the real world, you're limited by... By reality. By reality, by the time it takes you to, the reality is to get from San Diego to Egypt, I'm going to have to take a, I don't even know how long a flight is. I've never taken, but it's probably a really, 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 really long flight. And it's really, really, really expensive. And it's going to, yeah, I got to take two weeks off of work probably just to enjoy, you know, Egypt when I get there. That's the reality. You're limited by reality. But in the metaverse, you know, companies are building virtual replicas of the real world. So in the metaverse, say 10, 15, 20 years down the road, I'm just gonna put on my headset and virtually see the great pyramids of Egypt. And I'm not talking like a like a, an animated version. I'm talking a real digital version of it. Like, like I'm walking through. You know how Redfin, I don't know if you've Redfin, but I'm just, just out of the housing market. So Redfin, you can do virtual walkthroughs of homes powered by a company called Matterport. Now Matterport's building these, these virtual replicas of the real world. We think that's gonna be a ubiquity in 10, 15, 20 years so that you can literally see the Great Pyramids of Egypt dynamically in real time through this headset, not an animated version, a real digital version of it. So it feels like you're actually there. Yes, it's not gonna replace the real thing. It's not gonna, you know, travel to Egypt is not gonna plummet. But what it's going to enable is all the people that can't afford a flight to Egypt, whether they afford from a money time or a time uh, or a, a time perspective, it's going to allow them to to see things that they never before would have been able to see, and that is that's remarkable. That's a truly, truly, truly cool thing, and a truly positive evolution of humanity. And so, what does it look like in 10, 15, 20 years? I don't know where humanity is going to take it, but the opportunities are very, very, very cool. And I'm very excited to see what we do create out of this virtual world by 2030, 2040, even 2050. Well, you're definitely getting me excited about it. So <laughs> as always, it's awesome to get uh, your time and your insights to our viewers. Uh, we're going to be doing a part two of this interview where, Luke, you're going to be talking about uh, some of the other aspect of the metaverse, and that's the crypto uh, aspect of it, some of these so-called metacoins. And I'm sure you have a lot to say about that. Uh, I do, Aaron. I think that the uh, crypto markets are one of the best ways to play the, the metaverse megatrend. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right. Thanks again, Luke. Cheers. Well, that's all we have from the Launchpad this week for part two of this in-depth look at the metaverse, specifically MetaCoins. Check back with us next week with us here at the Launchpad. And for more content from Luke, you can head on over to InvestorPlace.com, where he explores not just the metaverse, but a wide range of innovations. And as always, check back with us here at the Launchpad, where we will continue to look for trends like the metaverse and MetaCoins. And as always, try to shoot for the moon. <laughs>